Well, welcome to the Wednesday Night Bible Study here at New Beginnings Church. We're glad that you could be with us. We're studying the, the book of Breaking Intimidation by John Bevere. We're now in the fifth chapter and talks about the dormant gifts. We have a couple questions that have come in, so we'll answer them as we go through or get to the end of these, uh, this chapter. Uh, so we just want to pray and just ask God's blessing on this time. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we could be gathered together today yes, and Lord. have this Bible study. We pray that it would work in the hearts of your people. Strengthen us, Lord. Help us to overcome intimidation. And Lord, you help us to use the giftings and callings you put on our lives for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we begin this study tonight, we're talking that we're going to talk about in 2 Timothy 1, 6, and 7. And one of the questions he talks or statements he makes is, why are so many of us ineffective? And I think that we've become ineffective by some of the things we come against or come, it comes against us. So we need to remember what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance <clears throat> that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Amen. Amen. So those two things go together, stirring up the gift of God, and then we got to be careful that God, God know that God did not give us the spirit of fear. So the Greek word for stirring it up means to kindle afresh and to keep into full flame. It also uh, comes to that place that we need, to, we need to stir those things up like a fire needs to be stirred. So understand this, the gift does not work automatically. It doesn't just go all of a sudden you're walking on the street and say, oh, I got to go do something for somebody. It does come that way, but really it's our mind staying on God and saying, God, what do you want me to do or how do I do these things? Okay. Edmund Burke in 1795 said this, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Amen. And we've come across many things sometimes when we're good people, good men and women, and we talk about men tonight, please understand I'm including women too. We're not, we're not differencing on this, even though we'll talk about some men, but women also come into this. So we got to be careful that we don't come to the place of uh, doing nothing. There are two questions we need to answer. One is, what causes the gift to become dormant, and how do we stir it up? And uh, we're going to answer the second question later in the chapter. We need to know what causes the gift to become dormant. And I think it's that verse number 7. Would you read verse 7 again for me? And uh, I'll, I'll read it. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Yeah. So a spirit of fear can come upon us or come at us because of some situation, some person, or even a feeling that we have, we're reminded of our past, so we're not good enough. And uh, those things are the ones that become, that causes us to have a spirit of fear. So Timothy and Paul, uh, John Bevere writes this, and he said, if I were to write, rewrite this scripture, he says, Timothy, the gift of God that lies in, in you lies dormant because of intimidation. Because somebody intimidated him. When I did a little study on this years ago, it's been a long time, but Timothy was put in as a pastor of this church in Ephesus that had any, anywhere between five and 5,000 members. Uh, John the Beloved was, was one of the people that was in his church, Mary the mother of Jesus. So he became the pastor of this great church. Now he traveled with Paul for years. But you know, when you're put in your own ministry, it can be intimidating. And I think it should be. Yes. I think it should be to a point where we're dependent upon God, that we don't come to that place that we're, we're so all full of ourselves, I can do anything. So intimidation, intimidated believers lose their authority by the spirit of default. Consequently, their gift, God's ability in them, lies asleep and inactive. So through, though it is present, it's not an operation because intimidation has come. So here's a definition of intimidation. It means to re, uh, render timid, to inspire with fear, uh, to cause cowardice, to discourage, coerce, suppress by threatening. How many have ever been threatened by somebody? Yes. And you never thought you'd back down, but all of a sudden you do. The action uh, of it is making afraid, uh, using threats of violence or force to restrain fr some from some action. So certain things stop you. 
You know, and we, we're going to talk about this tonight and some of the, the examples that he uses in here in, in Elijah's life and Elijah. We sense that today. In ministry, we sense it in the world today. People are being intimidated by the force of others. A few are intimidating the masses. Yes. They really are. And all of a sudden, you got people backing down. They're changing names of football teams because it offends somebody or whatever the case. It's through intimidation. And we want to make everybody happy. We can't make everybody happy. Sometimes, I'm just going to say this, sometimes you got to get over yourself. You know. But anyway... So the object, object, the objective <laughs> of intimidation is to restrain you from action. If the devil can stop you, or somebody can stop you from succeeding in what God's designed you to do and be, we're never going to have have the success. We also can have be overwhelmed with a sense of inferiority and fear. The origin, the the origin of intimidation is fear. It comes from the devil. That's where it's at. He has one objective, to control you and to limit you. Mm -hmm. If he can control you and limit you through fear, he will do it. If he finds that button to push in your life, then that's what he'll do. We're going to talk about Elijah the prophet, great, great man of God, yes. tremendous things in his life. And uh, we'll go ahead and read First uh, Kings 17, 1 Kings 17.1. And Elijah the Tishbite who was uh, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Amen. So he stands up and says this to a king. He wasn't afraid of the king. Mm -mm. And I guess maybe at the beginning of this, the king wouldn't be afraid of him. Yeah. You know? Right. You're going to stop rain. That doesn't happen. But, you know, as time goes on, it's not raining. There's no dew. Things change. Yes. You know, and we find that he's being fed by ravens and everybody else is using all their things. And through a whole lot of uh, other circumstances, he gets, he gets ministered to by a widow and her son. The, the, cor the meal never ran out. The oil never ran out. God had provided for them miraculously. Uh, even when the boy died, she, he raised the boy from, dead, from the dead. So now, all of a sudden, he comes back to uh, Ahab, and he begins to, he's going he's gonna to make some changes. But you know, there's some things that have to happen here. In 1 Kings 18, uh, 17. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? So you, he, you're the one that's troubling Israel. Well... You know, we turn around and say, here's the prophet that says something, but maybe the prophet is judging the, the actions of the leadership. And we're finding that today in our world. He says, I've not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have uh, forsaken the commandments of the Lord. And that's where we're at today. And uh, seeing the things that goes on. So now there's going to be a confrontation. There's going to be a confrontation with, with uh, uh, Elijah and the prophets. And he begins to call a, a challenge out to all of them. And we're at uh, 1 Kings 18, 29. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. Amen. So we, now, now Elijah is going to say something and, and bring fire down. Char, char challenges them. He, the God who answers by fire is the one that is, that is uh, God. And uh, so we, it, it turns out then, after God answered them, this is really strange because he got 850 prophets and he kills them all. You would think one guy, 850 guys could overcome one guy. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, God put fear in them or maybe the Israelites who stand, stood up and helped them overcome. I don't know. It doesn't say but it's really, it's really surprising. And then he turns around and says to Ahab, it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden something changes. But remember this. One of the things before we could bring the refreshing of the rain, the altar had to be restored. What has to be restored in your life? Your relationship with God. Okay. Your relationship with God must be restored. Until we can turn around and, and defeat the enemies 
of our lives. So there's a lot of things that have to be changed. So we need to we need to do that. So we find that he uh, he uh, runs to runs to uh, the city, and all of a sudden we find that uh, that Jezebel. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> my wife did a great teaching on Jezebel years ago. She did this for quite a while. And uh, she understands that spirit of Jezebel. Not that she has one, but she understands the scriptures. And, and we can see it in people's lives. And it's not just women. Let me right. say this. It's not a, this is not just a woman thing. This is a spirit that can get a hold of anybody at any time. Right. Okay. So we have uh, 1 Kings 19, 3-4. Okay. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Would you, would you read verse 2 for me? I forgot to give that okay. to you. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to, unto Elijah, uh, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So this is the intimidation that came in. It didn't even come by her voice. Mm -mm. It came by a messenger. And I'm not sure why he ran. Why he, he allowed this to work in his life. Who knows? Uh, but sometimes there's some triggers that we have yes. that work against us. And this was the trigger for him. So all of a sudden, after a great day of a great battle that he won, he ran for his life. He was so intimidated and so discouraged by Jezebel, he wanted to die. Yes. There are times that we're disappointed by things. And sometimes they get pretty nasty. And it feels like you want to die. But I like his one statement. It's enough. I'm no better than my father's. And sometimes we think we're better than somebody else. Well, I'm, look at what God's done in my life. But there's also something to come on. So we have to find there is something, could be something, deep in our heart that's working against us. Yes. The purpose of her, her intimidation was to prevent Elijah from performing God's total purpose. Mm-hmm. I, I, the Bible never says, but there was a purpose for him to deal with Ahab and for uh, against Jezebel. So unwittingly, well, by him leaving, he cooperated with her plan. Yes. When you back away from what God wants, you cooperate with the plan of the enemy. This is this is so funny. So the spirit of of intimidation unleashes confusion, discouragement, and frustration. The stronger the intimidation the greater the discouragement and hopelessness. When we've lose, lost hope, we've lost everything. And that's what he was at. He was at a place, I'm, I'm so hopeless. All of a sudden, everything changed in one moment. So hopeless, I'm ready to sit down and die. Mm -hmm. that's, pretty, that's pretty hopeless. And we yes. see that today in people. That's sad to say. And if, the, if intimidation is not dealt with immediately... It will cause you to do things you never thought you would have do, done under, unless you're under the influence. We find people doing strange things today because of intimidation. And uh, so he was knocked out of his authority. He was supposed to confront Jezebel, his, her intimidation head on. His ministry uh, to the nation was suppressed. So let me ask a question. What has caused your ministry to be suppressed, that you no longer are effective in your church, in your home, in your family, in your business. Intimidation. Yes. Fear, hopelessness, despair. All those things are coming against us. So then he runs, he goes, he runs away, he gets to a place, and God asks him, Why are you here? <laughs> Go ahead and read uh, 1 Kings 19 9. And it came thither unto a cave and lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came unto him and he said unto him what dost thou uh, here what are you doing here you know, it's funny he was out on Mount Oreb mm -hmm. which is, is is a place where God gave the, the Ten Commandments Sinai. Mm -hmm. Mount Sinai both of them this together so how was it he run he ran to this mountain I don't know whether he knew it or what 
But he ended up running to this mountain, running to this place. And uh, why'd you run from your post? Why are you hiding here? Yeah. God never caused the church to hide. No. Now we go on hiding because of persecution, physical persecution. But when we're persecuted by intimidation, that's wrong. Yeah. And we got people today hiding behind crowds or, or running away from things uh, because they're being intimidated by the things. And uh, God knew that Elijah was determined to run. When a man has it in his heart to do something, listen to this, God will often let him do it. Yes. God would never take away our will. He's looking for us to ha- hold on to our will. And they use an example about Balaam, where Barak, uh, the king of Moab, asked him to come and curse Israel when they're going through the wilderness because yeah. he didn't want to deal with them. And Balaam went back, asked the Lord, and the Lord told him, you want to do it? Go ahead. Yeah. And then he gets on his donkey. Go ahead and read that, Numbers 22. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his donkey, and two servants were with him. So he's riding down the donkey. We know what happens. All of a sudden, the donkey starts pushing him against the wall, Mm -hmm. scraping his leg. He goes, hey, what's going on? And the donkey starts talking to him. (laughs) This is, (laughs) he wasn't so amazed at that. But when his eyes were open to see the the angel of the Lord there, he said, you go ahead and go. But you better say what I have have, have you say. And I'll tell you what, it changes his life. But when a man sets his heart to do something, God will not stop him, even if it's out of the perfect will of God. Sometimes we want something so bad, we pay a great price for it. There was a story where a young man in another church wanted to marry this girl, and he, she, he wanted her, wanted her. He finally got her to get married. He comes to the pastor a couple months later. He says, I, I married the beast of Revelation. <laughs> you know, there was no, no, no compromise there. There was just, it was horrible. You got what you wanted, and God let you have it. Yes. So you want, but now Elijah's at a place where he's uh, wants. To, he doesn't want to face uh, Jezebel. He wanted out of the pressure that he was under. You know, ministry is pressure. Being faithful to God can be pressure, because people don't want you to succeed. And uh, God will wait to deal with uh, Elijah's intimidation once he reached Mount Oreb. It was that time he let him get all the way there. The work of God began through Elijah could not be completed until Jezebel was confronted. If Jezebel confronted, was, excuse me, if Jezebel intimidated Elijah, what would happen to everybody? She's intimidated the whole nation. Yes, she did. So it wasn't just one person. It was the entire nation that she intimidated. And her presence, her spirit, had to be confronted. And it was up to, up to Elijah. But now it wasn't going to happen. But there was, uh, in 1 Kings 21, 25, Mm -hmm. is that who we have? But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness uh, in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Wow, he sold himself himself. to wickedness. We're trying to get rewards out of certain things. We're selling ourselves to those things, okay? In uh, 1 Kings 19, 15 through 17. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou hast come, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. That one? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, uh, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphath, and Abimeholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it, and it goes on and said, if, if uh, it shall be that whosoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elijah will kill. So it took three yes. men to do one man's job. What's it going to take to get your job done that God has for your life? God had two men that would, uh, that would not run from Israel. They would complete the assignment. Thank God that we have men. You know, and when the Bible said that... Uh, Elijah said, that, I'm the only one. God said, I got 7,000 that's not bowed their knee Amen. in Israel mm-hmm. to, to this. So even today, 
There's thousands of men and women who've not bowed their knee to intimidation and to the times that we suffer today. So there are those who bear a title of pastor or leader, and yet they can be controlled by manipulation and intimidation from others. Intimidation from others. Yes. They can be the, the wives, the associates, the uh, me board members, deacons, elders, intercessors, all, all so forth. But here's something that John Brevere brought out, and I never thought about this until. It also happens in the homes. Mm -hmm. Parents can be intimidated by their children. Yes, yes. We're pressured, 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 pressured. There comes a time we got to stop it. Husbands can be intimidated by their wives, and wives can be intimidated by their husbands. We have to work together to balance the home. When Elijah ran from Jezebel, Elijah took with him the courage of the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everything that they believed in was gone. And when, when a leader falls, the hope and the, and the power, the life of the people seem to fall too. Yes. You know, we've seen that in the past. And when we think about ministry, we turn around and we see people in ministry fall. People just want to want to quit God. They want to, well, if they can't make it. Listen, every man, every woman has to deal with God, have, uh, deal with God, deal with, with sin, approach your life, whatever it is. We've got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And we have, to, we have to learn to overcome. And it's the same within the home. If the father's not in right standing with uh, the uh, Lord, uh, you see the family just go wayward. Yeah. You know? We have to be in that place. So when we're intimidated, we give up our position of authority. Consequently, the gift of God to serve and to protect lives dormant. It becomes inept. When we end up unintentionally furthering the cause, of the one who's intimidating us. There are many Old Testament accounts of God's people backing down when they should have pressed forward. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. And so it's there for our encouragement to, to learn lessons. We have to learn from people. We have to be teachable all the time. We have to come to that understanding. Uh, and go to uh, Romans 15, chapter 4, or 4, 15, 4, excuse me. For, whosoever, whatsoever, for whatsoever things were written after time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Amen. So my question, I have a couple questions for you. Who's intimidating you? Mm-hmm. Who's stopping you from fulfilling? Is it a thought? Is it a word? Is it a person? Or is it your own feelings? Yes. Because sometimes it gets in us so much. It's ourselves. We battle with ourselves. There's three people we battle. God, the devil, and yourself. And the devil will use yourself on yourself. Yes. <laughs> we look at cities. Listen to that I'm going to say. We look at cities, government, businesses that are being intimidated by a few of our society today. It's the spirit of Jezebel. Yes. Everything, Jezebel was against everything. It's only what she wanted. Yes. Not what was necessary for the, for the land, not for the comfort of everybody else. It's the spirit of Jezebel. Spoiled and we need to break child. that spirit. Yeah, it's a spoiled child, exactly. Mm -hmm. We need to break that spirit and break that intimidation over our nation in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. by the blood of Jesus. Yes. We need to take a stand for those things. And it's, it's so powerful so that we, we come to that place. So I hope I answered the questions that you may have on your mind about some of this. And I know we got a lot more to go through, but uh, just a couple of real quick questions. When Elijah commanded uh, the, the king to, to gather the 850 prophets uh, with the whole nation, wasn't that challenge and intimidation on the king? Probably. But, you know, he, he said, what are you going to do? I'm going to bring 850, and they're going to they're gonna do their thing. You're going to do yours. You're one man. He's not worried. You know, we're not worried about one man. We're worried about 850. Yeah. The problem was this man of God, uh, the 850 should have been worried about him. Mm -hmm. And they ended up being worried about him. And so we, we have to come to that place. Uh, and isn't it interesting that Elijah... 
ran for 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Horeb of Sinai, the Mount of God, the city where Israel received the law. And I think that is amazing. We have to come back to the law of God. Yes. As we begin to walk our life and do the things, when we get messed up or we get at a, we're at a crossroads, stop, don't make a choice until you go back. What's the last thing God said to me? Yes. Where do I find that? And we need to build that relationship again with God. And uh, I don't know that it d demise somebody else, did it uh, diminish his, his character? I think it really diminished the, the power of God in his life. His life. Because how much greater would it have been for Elijah, one man, stand up and, I don't know whether he would have cursed her or spoke a thing or fire come down in heaven that would have destroyed, would have really turned Israel back on its feet toward God. But then later on, it was in a battle that Jehu says, hey, throw her down from the balcony. Who'd be for God? Throw her off the balcony. And they did twice, mm -hmm. you know, and then the dogs ate her up according to the word of the Lord. And so that is a very, very powerful thing. Let's just, let's just pray for our nation today, just for a moment, yeah. and then we have an announcement. Lord Jesus, we just come to you right now, and we want to take authority over this spirit of Jezebel over our nation. God, in the name of Jesus, we come against this spirit of Jezebel. We break this bond, this this boldness, this chain that is gripping our nation in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask God that you would just move mightily on the church of Jesus Christ, that we could stand up boldly at this time, and God, just not give in to intimidation, not give in to the spirit of Jezebel. God, but we break this in the name of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, Lord, in your name, Jesus. And we plead your blood over this nation. Yes. Your glory over this nation, over this world, God, over your churches around the world. God, that you would do a mighty work in them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We give you this announcement. Uh, this Thursday uh, will be drive through food bank here at the church at 4 o'clock. And then on Sunday we have a special little event. And we didn't get to announce it earlier. We're going to have a water baptism right after the service. We have a couple people that want to get baptized. And so Pastor Matt and I are going to be, he'll be doing his first water baptism down here at the, at the lake at Avonia. So please join us for that. And we want to thank you for listening and thank you for your comments. Please uh, keep them coming and going. Amen. We love you guys and uh, we, we miss you very, very much. You want to say anything? No. No? no. no. It's all been said. Anne doesn't want to say anything. She'll tell me later. <laughs> we love you guys. God bless you. Shake hands. Wave at us. And uh, Hulk, when you go by here, God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.